So last night, the controversial women's short program at the Olympics was aired for all to see, even though it was tape delayed by about a day. Some of us had an opportunity to look at it. It has been out for everybody to see now. And we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at some of the things that were curious in this event, some of the inconsistencies in the judging that I saw, some of the consistencies in the judging that I saw. And ultimately, we're just going to take a look at how this doping scandal that's arisen in the sport of figure skating plays a larger role in the greater picture and really how it's being used to the advantage um, in this competition. So let's uh, go ahead and dive right in. By the way, my name is Coach Leif Hafstrom. I've been a coach for over 15 years. I competed at the U.S. National Championships and internationally for the United States. So I have a lot of experience with my own skaters and going over protocols and trying to interpret exactly what it is that the judges are trying to tell you. And we're more or less going to do what I would do with any athlete after an event. And we're just going to go and parse through these uh, results. So the first thing, um, you know, everybody is up in arms about Camilla, Camilla Valieva's score. Um, there's certainly the rumblings that it was maybe a little bit overscored. And I'm certainly in agreement with a lot of this. Um, the first thing that I heard that was maybe a little bit of a misconception is that her triple axle was under rotated. And as you can see here, it clearly did not get under rotated. It did take a deduction on the grade of execution. You can see she lost nearly three points on that. I just got to say judge one was way off on here. Um, I can kind of see a negative three. I would have been one of the judges that gave a negative four. Uh, this was a clearly out of control triple axle. Did she fully rotate it? Actually, yeah. And... You can see right here, I have a brief freeze frame of her landing. I mean, you can just see a lot of technical problems. You can see that she's totally tilted out to her left side. So she's going to be landing on her right leg, but her body weight's totally over her left side. Her leg is wrapped around, kind of meaning she's just kind of squeezing for dear life and hoping for the best at this point. Her arms are just totally in disarray. I mean, I know she does the arms over the head, but you're going to see a, a lot more organization in her landings on the ones that she nails. And right here, you can just see absolutely nothing went wrong. If you caught the other angle, by the way, you could see how tilted in the air she was. Absolutely no hope of landing it. And then you're going to see what happens here. Total fallout. You know, she uses that sort of inside edge little move right here to kind of skirt past the fact that that was just a, you know, a disaster of a landing. I don't see how that gets a negative two or even really a negative three. That was a clearly out of control triple axle and, it, you know, it wasn't a fall, so I, I can kind of see how it doesn't get a minus five. Kind of in disagreements. Again, this is a very minor in the overall score. Um, that's not alone what's going to kind of make up that two-point difference, but that's certainly curious. Now, it is correct to say that that triple axle, because it was rotated in the definition of what it is that they're looking for, that she's going to get the full credit and then get the minus GOE deduction. And we can debate whether a clean double axle deserves more than a sloppy triple all night long. But this is, you know, that's what happened right there. She did mostly take a correct deduction. What I actually was annoyed, though, is you can see here she scored higher than Anna on transitions, but clearly... Uh, it wasn't really an intended transition right there. That was, that was a mess. And I think that that probably deserved a slight hit. Again, how much does this actually amount to in the overall score? I'd probably say like at most a half of a point. So like we're already now, you know, her 82 could maybe be an 81 and change now. So kind of something that we, we want to go along with as we go throughout this. Um, I think that that transition score is a little high. And then, you know, you could even make the argument that the... Some of the skating skills were even taken out of the program because that jump wasn't landed. And maybe this is a little bit high right there. Um, one thing I can say as we're going down, I, I heard a great way to describe this and uh, from one of my colleagues, and we'll share it right here. When it comes to things like composition, and we're going to get uh, deeper into this here in a second, the Russian ladies do have a really good composition score, and there's a reason for this. And that is... You know, this is the, the saying that I always heard, which is performance and interpretation of the music is the skater's fault. Composition is the choreographer's fault. And the thing is, is that these girls, for better or for worse, are loading their programs full of advanced turns. So I mean, brackets, counters, uh, we're talking rockers. They do a high number of those twizzles, all the advanced turns, in addition to a lot of athletic movements that aren't necessarily quantified, but... 
you know, you can, uh, you can count this stuff out. You can see, like, okay, she's doing a rocker here and a counter here and a this, that. This is what's leading into the composition score. It's really just how intricate some of these patterns are. And for what it's worth, they do show up with loaded in that composition style. Now, I would honestly say that the performance, too, was another one that maybe was a little bit high right here. And... I've seen more engaging performances out of her, and I don't think that that was the best performance in the competition. So, you know, you could make the argument, okay, they, they liked Anna's performance a little bit more. I would say with the mistake that there should have been a little bit more of a difference there. You know, you're taking a look at Kaori's performance. I think it was maybe more solid start to finish than Camilla's. Now, again, we're getting into the exact scoring on here. We're talking about, you know, less than a half a point. So now her 81 and change is maybe an 81 now at best, all right? The other thing that really got a lot of attention was her LUTs, and I was hot on this at first. I have some issues with their technique like a lot of us do. Um, you know, it involves a lot of top-up rotation, which is sort of the opposite philosophy that I teach, which is, which is a more bottom-up style, meaning we're going to start at the base of the jump from the legs and let the upper body go with the legs through the jump. The lower body, they have a very, very clear differentiation in that as you can see here the left side of the skater is totally behind them but this is what the judges are looking at and why this jump didn't get the edge call at the time of the tap there is a clear outside edge going on and you know you can just see how much her blade is leaning to the outside and if you want to catch leeway in the sport this is how you do it get your tap to happen on that outside edge, and then during your pullback, whatever sort of weird, weird manipulations you do tend to be more ignored because that tap edge was fabulous. Now, I wanna compare this though to my favorite triple Lutz in this event. Um, that was none other than Karen Chen's, and she has a fabulous triple Lutz. Um, and you can see right here, deeper edge. She has a lot of the hallmarks of the, you know, what I would consider to be classic American technique, right? She's got that left shoulders leading in front. Her right side's not in front of her yet. She's doing a little bit more like what I was talking about, bottom up jumping. She's jumping from the legs. She has an excellent execution of that edge. And you can just see it just makes a gorgeous jump, you know, once it gets into the air. And that's why she gets that great lift into the air. Her body is going up with the jump. Now, as opposed to Camilla, you can see they're trying to get as much of that rotation to happen. They want to get into their peak rotation position sooner. And there's usually a trade-off here. There's a reason why I prefer Karen's technique to Camilla's on this jump. And it's because I recognize that if you're going to rotate jumps, you generally want more time in the air. And if you're not reaching certain benchmarks, it doesn't really matter how quick you rotate. I mean, unless you're doing stuff that's not humanly possible, you will get capped on rotation. It's why a lot of skaters have tried technique like this but haven't had the same level of success. They're not getting the lift that's allowing them to clear these in a lot of cases. That's not the case for the Russian girls, though. They're getting the lift and they're getting into their peak rotation position, which is why they're getting these called clean. But again, you gotta understand the how and the why and how the doping scandal kind of plays a larger role. What are they allowing themselves to do that other people in the past haven't been able to do? Well, this is one of them. They're getting more height on this particular technique than most other people are. And it's resulted in them being able to get over that quarter rotation threshold and the clean threshold on those quad jumps, and that's that's a big deal. Um, so this is, going back to the original point, this is why no edge call is called right here. They saw that frame, and um, you know that's a pretty consistent. Now let's compare this to some more borderline ones. I think Anna had a significantly more borderline one. I can see some characteristics here. Um, that knee is over the toe. You can still see that same hallmark. The left side is totally behind her at the time of the tap. This is closer to what I might consider to be sort of flat. And it's consistent with the way that the competition was judged here. You can see a similar one with Kaori, where if you actually take a look at her edge, you can kind of see it flatten out a little bit when you watch it in motion. But same thing here, you can see there's that ankle leaning on that outer edge a little bit, and it's through the tap. Now I wanna point out 
just one last Lutz. And, you know, it's one of people's most iconic, most favorite Lutzes of all time, Yuna Kim's. And you can just really see how hard she's really using that edge and just the employment of using that edge going up to it and how much more similar her technique is to Karen's in this regard, right? You can see that right side hasn't come all the way through. She's still leading with the left shoulder. She's relying on that edge all the way through that takeoff. It's why she has one of the absolute greatest Lutzes of all time. So that's certainly something that I thought was a little curious. Now, let's get into a couple other quick arguments so this video doesn't drag on for a really, really long time. Um, these were some things that I thought were actually interesting in the competition. And it just kind of goes to show you what exactly, how confusing sometimes this all can be. Okay, so Kaori Sakamoto, phenomenal skate, by the way. I personally feel this should have been the winning program. Not necessarily by a lot. It's, you know, it's just a short program. The competition gets won in the free skate. You can't really normally expect a whole lot of separation unless you're doing what Camilla was doing and landing that triple axle fabulously. And you can see how, yeah, those six extra points that the triple axle is worth compared to the double, or I guess I should say five, but then you got to start getting into what GOE factors and all of this. You can rack up many more points with the triple axle, and that's kind of showcased there. And then even here, her botched triple axle still scores slightly better than a clean double and i think there's some debate there right like it's kind of hard to say on the one hand being able to do a triple axle is a huge deal like being able to rotate that cleanly is something that not everybody can do and it deserves credit on the other hand you know it was a mess and i would say that that was one of those triple axles that didn't really have a hope of being landed so Maybe there needs to be a better, better penalty assessed here. This is the important thing, though, to me. Kaori's double axle was significantly better than Anna's, and it was scored that way. Excellent. Um, Kaori's Lutz was a stronger jumping element, I felt, than the flip. Although I want to make one caveat. Anna's transition out of that was absolutely insane, and it's actually reflected here in the scores. Her transition scores were higher than Kaori's, who I felt did simpler transitions. Um, I made a comment that her combination on the flip toe when I was watching was one that I, I give to my lower level skaters. She did it fabulously, obviously better than a lower level sk skater could perform it, but it's a basic transition. It's one that's composition isn't necessarily difficult. She just does it fabulously. And that's, you know, she's doing the transition. But when someone does something like Anna's transition out of the flip, which landed the jump, controlled the edge, grabbed her leg, changed direction once with a hopping counter, and then changed direction again with a rocker going into a spin. I, that's a lot of technical difficulty pounded on top of each other. And I, I want to see skaters get rewarded for doing difficult stuff like that. So when I see her get slightly ahead on the transitions, I'm not bothered, but I'm happy to see that Kaori beat her on the skating skills because she deserved to. She was flying around the rink. She was visibly stronger and faster. And so those kinds of things reflecting were important to me. I just, I don't necessarily know that the performance and the composition, the music interpretation, you know, clearly they like what, Camilla Valieva and Anna were doing. At the end of the day, though, that's half a point that separating them in the short program is going to be a chasm wide by the time the Russian girls are executing triple axles and quads in their program. And what's going to happen is you might end up with a point or two of differentiation. Like you can see 36.62 versus a 37.33. And you can actually see that Kaori won on the technical, as she should. Her technical was stronger, but it's just that little bit of difference is negligible. And what's going to happen in the free skate is if these girls land or fully rotate quads, because as we can see, fully rotating right here, a triple axle that's just fully rotated and is a mess is worth about a half a point more. They're going to use that to their advantage. As long as those jumps are fully rotated and they're well aware of this, they're going to get enough of the reward. And if they outright land them, it's going to be even more difficult to overcome. It's past the point in which program components are realistically going to have any 
real take at this. Now, the last thing I wanted to take a look at was I heard a lot of people complain about some of the Russians not taking proper deductions. And Alexandra Trusova was a good example of kind of how it happens. You know, she got called on her flip. She had a short rotation. Her program components and skating scores were actually a lot lower um, as they should be compared to some of the other competitors. She does have a lot of the same difficulty in composition because you just kind of have to understand this has just kind of been a Terry's MO the whole time. She's the one that was backloading programs. She's the one that crams in difficult terms regardless of whether they're performed at the absolute highest level. She's aware that the judges are going to reward certain things. And, you know, for lack of a better word, she's willing to min-max. She will throw out any other sensibilities other than what she thinks is going to score. So you have to factor that into this whole doping scandal at wide is what I think. And you got to look at what in training have they been allowed to do that other people haven't been allowed to do that's allowed them to pass something off and be able to get these scores. And that's ultimately, for better or for worse, you can see that that's the strategy that they've employed, right? They're going to load it up with the difficult jumps. They're going to train those spins until they know they're going to hit the maximum levels. They're going to get those maximum levels on the step sequences because they're going to hit that criteria. And most important, they're going to make an appeal to get all of these different things. They know everything has to have a transition and they're going to do difficult transitions going into it, which is how they're kind of keeping pace in the short. And then they're going to make it to the free and really go out with that technical. Now, the last one I want to talk about was Wakaba, who a lot of people I had heard talked about, well, she landed the triple in the short program. How did she possibly score lower? And it just different elements. Um, you can see right here, she had the quarter on the flip. She had the under rotation on the toe loop. Um, and it was done in a way that I do typically think is going to call. But she did have the highest scoring axle element in the entire competition. Um I think they were a little tighter on her on GOE, to be honest. I, she did a triple freaking axle, for goodness sakes. Throw a little GOE this girl's way. You could have given her a 10 for that. It was fabulous. Um, maybe some of that GOE was taken because it was under review, and I personally would have definitely wanted to review on it also. But upon review, I would have called that clean. It was an excellent jump. But just understand that it was from other elements that this got lost. And whenever you catch edge calls and under rotations and everything like that, it really is a double, double whammy. She lost two points pretty much visibly right there on the GOE. And then you also have to look at it is it's not just losing two points, but it's actually a swing. Because while she's losing points, everybody else was gaining points. So now all of a sudden, that minus two is really the difference between four points. And you start to get to understand why making sure that everything that you do in the competition is either relatively clean, or it's more difficult than what somebody else has done. And for lack of a better word, that's the weakness in the judging right now. And it's being exploited in a specific way that is being aided by this doping scandal that we're now seeing. So I just want to kind of point out some of the weird things that I saw in the judging, some of the inconsistencies, some of the things that were good in the judging. And uh, yeah, what we can expect to see during the free scape. And so the last thing I'm going to kind of go over here, I'm going to go ahead and say Camila Valieva's program component scores absolutely slightly overscored, but probably not enough in the reasonable range that we can expect these judges to do based off of everything that we know that they've done to this point to have maybe flipped the score. Although I just, I think that you then also have to look at some of these arguments like, you know, could a little bit of an edge on some of these performance and interpretation of music from Kaori flip things over? Absolutely. Is there an argument to be made that maybe Anna should be in first? Sure. I think that that's also a viable argument and we kind of can kind of get into these, but this is where we're at so far, where the judging was maybe a little bit weak. I think you can say the triple axle definitely should have taken a little bit more of a hit. And I think that we can reasonably say at least one point should have probably been taken off of those program component scores, meaning at the very least, there should be a little bit more of a deadlock, but... The one thing that I can say is that judges have more or less told these women 
go out and win this in the free skate, which is really going to favor the Russian skaters who have absolutely insane amounts of technical ability going into those programs. So that's all I got for you today. If you are interested in more looks at some of the judging and some of the inconsistencies in this, let me know in the comment section below and like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you and see you after the free skate.